With season four of HBO's hit series Succession set to begin airing at the end of March, I thought now might be the perfect time to remind ourselves what makes that show so entertaining. We'll take a closer look at some of its real life locations that serve as the homes of some of its most memorable characters. Let's start with the billionaire worthy condo that serves as home base to Succession's lead character, Kendall Roy, portrayed by Jeremy Strong. It's extremely rare to find a property that evokes the style of a Tribeca loft with the sophistication of a Park Avenue penthouse. But with this historic landmark, the production designers for Succession sure did nail it. Season 3 of the hit series featured scene after scene in this showcase of an apartment as Kendall Roy readied himself to wage war against his father Logan, played by Brian Cox. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. But before we get into details that make this penthouse stand out, let's take a look at its history. Finished in 1913, the Woolworth Tower was the corporate headquarters of F.W. Woolworth who built his fortune on the back of five and dime stores. He then commissioned Cass Gilbert to design the building that was to be built smack dab in the middle of Broadway, where it once held the record for being the tallest in the world. Standing at 792 feet tall, this neo-gothic architectural beauty was named a National Historic Landmark in 1966. Fast forward to the 21st century and a New York development firm has now transformed floors 29 through 58 of into 32 of the city's most sought after in high-end condos. Celebrated architect Thierry W. Despont, the man behind the restoration of the Statue of Liberty and the renovation of the Ritz in Paris, led the building's interior update and his style is evident everywhere, especially Pavilion A, which is exactly where Kendall Roy's unit is located. The luxury Manhattan condo featured so often in season three of the HBO series boasts five bedrooms, six and a half bathrooms, and an epic 10,171 square feet of interior space. All of that room guarantees living here feels more like owning a mansion than your normal apartment. To begin with, the home comes with its own private elevator landing. Once you step foot off of that and into the home, you'll discover a property with 14 foot tall ceilings and French oak floors everywhere you look. But it's this striking black spiral staircase located in the great room that's bound to grab hold of your attention and keep it. Couple that with the room's twin skylights, double fireplaces, as well as a Baccarat chandelier, and you know this room is opulent. As long as no one's sending anyone a box of potentially poisoned donuts as a veiled threat, that is. Over in the kitchen, you've got marble countertops, custom cabinets, as well as luxury appliances, including a wine fridge and two dishwashers. As for the home's formal dining room, it's a throwback to a former era when New York City's elite regularly hosted some of the world's most extravagant parties with champagne waterfalls and unlimited caviar. Some spaces that we haven't seen before are said to include a 52 foot great room, a second living room, as well as a third one next to the great room, and even a fourth. Then there's the bedrooms which have their own wing, the most important of which is of course the master suite, which features its own morning kitchen, access to a 2,770 70 square foot terrace and a walk-in closet. While the master bath hasn't made its way onto screen either, it does include a steam shower, freestanding soaking tub, and a dual vanity with heated floors. Beyond its screen ready appeal, the home also boasts one of the city's highest perch terraces, hovering 920 feet above street level. That's big enough to comfortably accommodate 200 of your closest friends for a sit down dinner. Of course, none of this comes cheap as I'm sure you might imagine. Not only does the penthouse come with fees to the tune of $12,765 per month to take advantage of the building's 50 foot lap pool, fitness center, wine cellar, and wine tasting room. But when it hit the market about a year and a half ago, the sellers hung a price tag of $59 million on it. Following a number of months on the market, that price would fall all the way to 35 million. It then sold to an LLC named Sky Palace. Next, let's check out Kendall's father, Logan Roy's apartment. Throughout succession, Logan Roy has lived in a spacious Fifth Avenue townhouse located opposite the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But as it turns out, that apartment isn't actually a real place. Instead, this one is a set created in Silver Cup Studios, where the series regularly shoots. Production designer Stephen Carter told Architectural Digest that when he was creating this spot, he was inspired by the former Fifth Avenue apartments 
of alcohol industry entrepreneurs Edgar and Charles Brofman. Their homes were technically located on the same street as Logan Roy. Particularly close attention was paid to the family's use of a muted color scheme. While discussing the look, Stephen told Architectural Digest, Edgar Sr.'s apartment has the scale views and layout, but the color palette was pretty shocking to the eye. The color palette was very clean and almost a bleached monotone of wealth. Another creative decision was made to not draw attention to the family's wealth with a decoration of the home. Instead, both contemporary pieces and antiques were hand-picked to tell a subtle story of the Roy family's place in society. That might be true, but I gotta say there isn't much about Logan's home that I find all that subtle, especially not that dining room. Let's check out the Roy's summer home next. The Roy family might not be real, but they sure live like wealthy people do in reality, including owning a vacation home in the glamorous beachfront neighborhood of the Hamptons. The scenes taking place here were all filmed at the Henry Ford Estate. This formerly 235 acre masterpiece was owned by the infamous car manufacturer Henry Ford's grandson. But after he divorced from his wife, Anne McDonald, she wound up taking control of the land and decided to break it apart piece by piece. In 1975, she sold the part of the land this home sits on for $1.8 million. Today, the house is comprised of 42 acres of land, including a quarter mile of oceanfront, making it the largest such stretch in the Hamptons, as well as access to three ponds and a meditation garden. Originally built in the 1960s, the home underwent a major renovation in 2008, but many of the property's original details were kept, including its distinctive ceiling mold Buildings, traditional chandeliers, Italian marble fireplaces, French parquet floors, and antique bathroom fixtures. Inside this 20,000 square foot mega mansion is 12 bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, two master suites, a chef's kitchen, a games room, a library, multiple gathering rooms, and a 48 foot long living room. There's also an entire wing of the house dedicated for housing staff members to live in complete with its own entrance. As for the outside, it boasts a spa, greenhouse, outdoor kitchen, outdoor shower, tennis courts, basketball court, a guest house, a six car garage, and a 20 foot long heated pool. This palace was originally listed a few years ago in 2017 for a whopping $175 million. Eventually that price was reduced to $145 million before it finally sold at $105 million to what was believed to be Canadian swimmer Richard Funk's family. In the fourth episode of season three of Succession, Kendall and Logan are summoned to the island mansion of one of their biggest investors, Josh Aronson, played by Adrian Brody. But in actual reality, this breathtaking home isn't exactly situated on a private island. Instead, it's also located in the Hamptons, near a public beach with neighboring properties on either side. Succession production designer Stephen Carter discussed with Architectural Digest what made finding this spot so difficult, stating, if you know the Hamptons coast, you know that it's built up within an inch of its life. One of the nice things about this property is that once you get out onto the pool deck, you sense that there might not be too many other buildings close by. Located in an area of the Hamptons known as Wainscot, this home was selected for the series from a group of four potential houses. Designed by Barnes Coy Architects, the current owners of this property bought it in 2015 for reported $16.5 million. With six bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and more than 11,000 square feet with over two acres of land, this home has a little bit of everything. Actually, a lot of everything. While filming at this location, the actors and crew were only here for one day and made minimal changes to the decor. They simply took advantage of what the home already had, including its great room with 22 foot tall ceilings, framed by windows that allowed for gorgeous lighting. Other interior amenities are said to include a recreational room, a pool, gym, as well as a spa with both steam and sauna features. While out on the exterior grounds, there are several decks, as well as a pool with submerged spa, an outdoor kitchen, dining table, and a waterside living room. All right, everyone, there you have it. A detailed look at a number of the residences from everyone's favorite 
family drama succession. What kind of ritzy places will our favorite characters be living in this coming season? Well, we'll just have to wait to find out. Thanks for watching today's video, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Do you prefer when Hollywood uses real life locations or manufactured sets? Let me know if you think being on location adds an air of realism in the comments down below. I mean, I kind of do. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a tour. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and if you dug this look into the homes of succession, then why not stay tuned for our recent look into the real-life homes of TV star Laura Preppin. Bye!